Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful evening and I hope you had a Merry Christmas and continue to have a happy and safe holiday season. I was thinking of a sermon uh, that I saw of this pastor with, where the church was totally empty except for uh, a few camera people and his wife, um, uh, and she, um, she was sitting in the front row of the, of the sanctuary, and, um, he, he, this pastor said, she has always been in my front row, um, Meaning, she's always cheered him on. She's always influenced him in a positive way. And this sermon was like months ago. Um, but when I was watching YouTube the other day, um, it came up just as a thumbnail. Because you know when you watch videos, the thumbnails for other videos like it come up? Well this video came up now i didn't watch the video again um but as i was thinking about it uh, that night the lord wanted me to ask you a simple question who's in your front row like meaning whether you're married or not single or whatever who is in your sphere of influence? Who is cheering cheering you on? Who do you have, um, who do you go to when things are good or when things are bad? And, or what do you go to when things are good and when things are bad? Um, because um, what you're going, what you're going to right now will determine your destiny in the future. So, whatever you're leaning on right now, good or bad or ugly, it will determine your destiny. So, um, although we have good or down days, and down days as human beings we need to be careful that uh what we're running through what we're running to in times of despair times of loneliness times of discontentment we need to make sure that those things are leaning positive to our destinies and and won't pull us back and those people won't pull us, um, won't, uh, uh, pull us back either. And the Lord really wants me to stress to you today, watch out who's in your front row. Watch out who you go, who you run to when things, or what you run to when things are going especially bad or good too. What do you do when you get bad news? Um, what do you do? Where do you go when you get bad news? Or even when you get good news, who's the first person you call? Does that person lift you up? Does that person encourage you? If you don't, you might need to distance yourself some way from that person. Because they may be unknowingly hindering your destiny. And the Lord has such great plans for you, beloved. It may not seem like it by now, but he has such great plans for you. And it all is dependent on who or what is in your front row. Um... I've heard, I heard a pastor say this one time, uh, he said, leadership, um, 
a good ministry is not about the leader. It's who's in the leader's front row. It's who is carrying uh, the ministry. Because any pastor will tell you, um, you may see them, but the people that that are the most important um, are the often the people that are not seen, the people that are not known. Those are the people that carry the ministry. And past ministry, um, having to do with anything, usually the most important people in your life are the people that are not seen, not heard. People don't know their names, but they impart to you in incredible ways. And I was talking to a friend the other day, and this friend and I were talking about lessons in quarantine, and I said to her, the greatest lesson in quarantine for me was the fact that I could be myself, because all those preachers that I admire or whatever, I don't have to be like them. I don't have to be like T.D. Jakes. I don't have to be like Stephen Furtick. All I need to be is like Rachel, because um, God said something really um, interesting to me. He said, they already have a lane. They're doing it very well. They don't need you to do what's in, what's in their lane. You need to do what's in your lane. Because there is a group of people that will only take God's word the way you, Rachel Esdale, do it. Not the way those preachers you love do it because they're already doing what they're doing and they're doing it brilliantly. They don't need you to do it. And I will say the same thing to you, that whatever stream you're in, whether it's preaching, whether it's business, whether it's being a mom, whether it's being a, a musician, whatever it is, um, you can see a person and admire them, but be careful that you don't try and copy them. Um, you can copy their, you can emulate their formula, but make sure that you're doing it with you, with you, not with trying to be like them, because I will tell you what the Lord told me, that they're already doing it, the way they do it, and they're doing it brilliantly, you can't be them, because you weren't designed to be them, you can look up to them, you can admire them, but you have to learn to feel comfortable in your own skin and know that you are past enough. You are past enough. A lot of people say uh, you are enough, but no, no. The Lord hasn't made you enough. He's made you way past enough. He's given you so many gifts so many callings that you're not accessing because you're too busy looking at how this mom raises her kids or how this preacher preaches this sermon or how uh, this business owner um, does, does their business, but you lose yourself. And it's okay to want to roughly model a person um, uh, it's okay to roughly model a person how they do things, 
to say, I want to try that for my ministry or whatever. But be careful that you you don't become a car carbon copy of that person. Because if you do, you'll be missing out on the gifts Taylor made for you. Could it be that you are so busy looking at Instagram, looking at Facebook to see how this person is is doing in their business and and trying to dress like this person and trying to be like this person that you are missing your own gifting you can model yourself after this person but you can't be this person so you can you can glean some knowledge from what this person does and add it to what you do but but whatever you do it has to come from what the Lord has put in you and he's put it a lot in you and you don't have to be another person but you and that's why you have to watch who is in your front row are they encouragers or are they discouragers and sometimes discouragement can be um, can be so hidden that they some sometimes uh, discouragement uh, can be hidden or blatant and sometimes encouragement can be hidden or blatant sometimes the person can come out and say that's a terrible idea or whatever and sometimes the person will insidiously with their snide comments say oh that won't work or that won't like they'll try and say it in a nice way but it won't be constructive it will be to put you down and be careful if that person is in your front row because your destiny is so precious God's got the world a, a specific realm a specific uh, vision a specific destiny just waiting for you God's got specific people for you to minister to and influence but the people in your front row may be hindering your progress and you don't even know you might even you might even think oh they're just giving me wisdom they're just being real when the devil is using them to discourage you from your ultimate destiny in this season you have to cipher out who is actually with you or and who is actually not and what criticism is constructive and to help you or to give you tips to give you knowledge and what criticism is to um, just discourage you and put you down and say um, oh that won't work if if there are are people in your life that will that have gone where you've gone before and they'll say um, maybe that's not a good idea but this might work and they may help you hone your your idea or hone your craft or they may give you feedback on on where to go or how to do it um real influencers um they'll give you feedback they'll give you ideas uh they won't just say no that's not a good idea they'll say you could do that but uh, here's a here's a better way to do it or though if it's a person that has gone uh, 
the same the same way they'll say oh here's how I did well you can do it that way but here's how I did it and here's how, here's the things to watch out for and here's uh, where I went to do what I went to do they won't outright discourage you they'll give you feedback to make your idea your vision better um, I think of my editor uh, when I went to edit um, The Soldier and the Stripper, um, my third novel. Uh, when I went to my editor, um, I had a lot of mistakes and all of that, and she corrected all that, but also she... Um, made the lines of my story sing. She added things that I would not even think to add. And that's what a person who means you, um, means you well does. They add things to your life that you wouldn't even think of. They don't just say, Oh, well, that's a good idea. They give you suggestions on how to make it better. Or they don't just say, oh, well, that's a bad idea. They give you they give you little tips on how you can improve it. Um, they, they tell you why, um, why uh, now may not be the time to do that. But you can try going to school and, and honing your craft. And those are the people that you listen to. Not just people that you say, that they say, oh my gosh, that's such a bad idea and it's done. Uh, they say, well, that may not be um, a good idea now because of this and that. But to... To start where you are, I would suggest this, or I would suggest that. Um, that's how you know people are really cheering you on and people are really meaning you well. Um, and the Lord really wants me to ask you again, who is in your front row? Uh, when I think of this from a biblical perspective, I think of Jesus, James, and John. Um, when Jesus um, wanted to uh, wanted, wanted to uh, make his circle smaller, he took James and John up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And he, he, uh, he's, he said, um, God came down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So, uh, James and John could, could handle that because they were, they were in Jesus's front row and could really, celebrate him. The people in your front row are not jealous of you. They celebrate you. So if you find out, if you sense by the Holy Spirit that the people in your front row, the people that you call on first, the people that you lean on are jealous of you or hold, hold ill will to you, those are not people in your front row. Your your destiny is too precious to just give away to anyone. Your destiny is sacred, and you need to treat it like a treasure. Because the Lord has placed a treasure in an earthen earthen vessel in you, and He expects a return. But you're giving yourself, you're giving your treasure to the people 
on on your front row who don't mean you any good. People in the genuine people in your front row, um, they see your light and they celebrate it. They don't dim it. People that are in genuine and they see your light, they're jealous and they try to dim it. So who is trying to dim your light? And who is trying to make it better? That middle that middle that middler had a song in the movie Beaches. All of you know it. Um Wind Beneath My Wings and and she said um in the second verse she said I was the one with all the glory while you were the one with all with all the strength a beautiful face without a name a beautiful smile to hide the pain so she was talking about a person who was in the background but lifted her up it's a beautiful song all of you have heard it and who is trying to dim your light and who is making making it brighter who is in who is um not encouraging who is um strongly um strongly encouraging you to hide behind uh to hide your light under a bushel and who is strongly encouraging you to make your light brighter your destiny is too precious to waste your destiny or what god's called you to do or how god's called you to do it is too precious to just um waste away the treasure on people that don't celebrate you and tolerate that don't celebrate you they just tolerate you and and the lord saying you want more of me he's saying i'm trying to reveal myself to you but the people in your front row are stunting your growth who is stunting your growth Beloved, I know it's hard to let go of people who are who are stunting your growth, but the Lord's saying, "You want more of me, but I can't reveal more of me because there are people in your life that are hindrances, not helps." And sometimes with hindrances. You don't need to get them out of your life totally. You need to ask the Lord what place they hold in your life. Going back to Jesus and the disciples, um, Jesus and his ministry. Jesus had the multitude, which is which is like everyone, ev everyone in the community. So the multitude would be like everyone on Facebook that's the multitude um, and G then Jesus had the 12 which were all the disciples the close people so in in a thing of Facebook that would be um, all all your close uh, knit Facebook friends all your family and your close church friends that that would be the disciple that would be your disciples um, and then Jesus had Peter James and John which would be your close friends this would be the friends you have on Facebook but you you and it's a, um, but there will be a small group that you see regularly, like your sisters and your close friends. So who is in that 
that close circle of friends that is influence, influencing your destiny. And they might not mean to be killing your destiny, but their words are just lethal. And it might, and it might be just, um, just that they don't mean to be, but it's just that their outlook is not what God wants you to have in your mind right now. So you don't have to uh, throw to throw them away like I don't want to see you anymore but just be selective of what place they have in your life so are they the multitude like your Facebook friends or are they your close friends that you just happen to have on Facebook or are they your family or really close friends, that small group that you see on a regular basis. So are they your multitude, your disciples, or your Peter, James, and John group? So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this sermon. I've totally enjoyed preaching it. I hope it helps you. Um, thank you guys so much. For watching me and uh, for your support. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This little one of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Bye guys, I'll see you later. Let that light shine today. I pray God's richest blessings on you and I pray that you 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 will get divine revelations about where you are and how you're supposed to operate where you are right now. Uh, and because we often think our destiny is somewhere in the future, but our destiny, I think, is st uh, it at least starts where we are right now. And, and God may have bigger plans in the future, but don't wait uh, until anything just shine where you are right now start ministering where you are right now start writing where you are right now start planning that business and make and and vision where you are right now you might you you might not have the resources to see come to uh fruition right now but you can make a plan and start researching researching courses and 
coming up with divine ways that you can really uh, let yourself shine. And, and you can start uh, deciding what place people have in your life, whether they're a multitude person, whether they're a uh, disciples person, or whether they're a Jesus, James, and John person. Bye, guys. See you later. Be careful of the Judases in your life. People that act like they're with you, but they're not. They want, they want your light. They want some of that light. Be careful of those people. They will crucify you in a heartbeat. Be careful of them. Your legacy, your destiny is too precious to have Judases lying around. And with those people too, we don't just cast them off like that. Sometimes they have to hold uh, an assigned place in our lives. Ask Jesus where that person is to be assigned to your life or whether that relationship has to end. I know it hurts sometimes. Betrayal is hard. It really is. But the Lord will bring out of that experience more things, more lessons, more life, um, more life lessons than you can ever imagine. That betrayal was for a reason. That marriage betrayal was for a reason. That friend betrayal was for a reason. Let it teach you things. Don't let it make you bitter. If people in your front row are ingenuine and you feel betrayed and you have to let them go, don't let that betrayal make you bitter. Let it make you better and more and more um, successful. What I mean by successful is just uh, let your let it lead you more to your destiny. Don't let betrayal hold you back. Don't let betrayal hold you back. That's why forgiveness is so important. Because unforgiveness, the key thing it does is hold the person back from trusting again and loving again. Especially if that person was a Peter, James, and John person, a close person. Don't let that betrayal from, from that person hold you back. Let it propel you. Let it give you tools that you can use uh, to make your life um, the, the life that God wants you to have. Don't let it make you bitter. Beloved, I'm begging you. Bitterness won't do anything but make you miserable and make the people around you not want to be around you anymore. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them let you, let you not trust again. Uh, many times when people get hurt, they just lock themselves up inside. But the Lord said, you don't have to lock yourself up inside because it's not helping the other person for you to be bitter and angry and unforgiving and whatever. It is actually hindering you. And many times that other person doesn't even care because they don't even know that you're, you're still bitter and angry. Let it go or begin the process 
of letting go. Sometimes letting go is a daily process, especially if that person was a Peter, James, and John person really close to you, really something, really someone you valued. Thank you guys for joining me this evening. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all and Taking you as a precious jewel. Want to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all and all, Jesus, I am a part, worthy is your name, Jesus, I am a And as I sign out, God, I pray for strength and peace. I pray for joy and love. Overflow in our lives, God. Overflow in our hearts, God. Overflow in our families, God. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Let it overflow, 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 let it overflow in our lives today, God. Give us the strength to make decisions about who is in our front row, Lord God. It'll, t it'll take strength, God, to let go of the friendships that we have had for years, God. But give us the strength to make decisions about where to put these people in our lives. Sometimes we know that they're not good for us, but we don't, we don't, um, we don't change their status in our life because we're too, we're too afraid. Lord Jesus, remove fear when it comes to who's in our front rows, to our Peter, James, and John. Oh God, to our friendships, God. Amen. Bye, guys. What a power of love in the presence of my 
Jesus, overflow in our lives today, God. We need you to come like a rushing, mighty rushing wind and overflow in our lives today. We need to feel your presence, God, like we have never felt your presence before. Take us to levels, God, that we haven't even experienced before. Take us to levels, oh God, um, past the days of old. Past the um, upper room, oh God. Take us to levels that nobody in this generation or previous generations have ever seen, God. We bless you. We give you praise and thanks. We honor you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I swear now, now I'm really leaving. Have a good night. Take care. Bye.